can you actually get away with murder by watching the series? Which case proved that Annalise Keating is the worst lawyer? Did the show make up its own laws? Hi, my name's Dylan, and today we break down the series' legal practice to share how to not get your license revoked. Quick disclaimer. We do know that the main purpose of the series is to entertain, so it doesn't have to match the real-life practice. Yet, we believe that understanding the differences between the series and a real legal system matters. And that's why we are here. Becoming a lawyer after one class? The series' problematic writing gave real lawyers a headache from day one. Here's why. The whole premise of the crime series is to get into the Keating 5 Best Students group which guarantees not only a place at her law firm, which is apparently basically second to none in the country, but also promises the brightest future. And that's where the trouble begins. After one week of studying, the students get to join Annalise's law firm, be practicing lawyers, and learn on the go. In real life, not gonna happen. Why do you think people spend years and years at law school? Because to be an attorney requires a lot of theory cramming and way more than just a week of practice. So in reality, the Keating Five would not be anything more than just a study group. Stay tuned to see what Annalise did in the series that would get a real-life lawyer's career destroyed. Don't say anything is the worst advice. In the second episode of season one, we see Rebecca, Wes's girlfriend, being detained by police and dragged from her flat for an alleged crime. To save his love interest, Wes manages to say his last words to her. Do not say anything. I guess if Annalise actually taught Wes some theory, he would have known that not saying anything during an examination can actually cause more trouble for you than help your case. There is the thing called adverse inferences from silence. Phew, that was a long one. It means that if you don't say anything or deny the accusations, the prosecutor can infer your guilt from your silence. In other words, your silence is treated as proof that you committed the crime you're accused of. So please, save yourself and passionately deny everything! How to not get your license revoked? And here is one of the most questionable practices depicted in the show. The first episode shows Annalise asking students to come up with a possible defense for the current case she took on just a week ago called Aspirin Assassin. Jump cut to Keating's office slash home, where she's invited hundreds of her students to watch her question her client and an alleged murderer, Gina Sadowski. If your lawyer invites anyone who does not have a practicing lawyer license to the witness interview, chances are he or she is not a good lawyer. This is a massive breach of attorney-client privilege. What it basically means is that the client has the right not to disclose any legal advice given by an attorney. Everything you say to your lawyer is kept between you two. The problem is that anyone who is not your lawyer can then be questioned and has no legal obligation to hide this information from the prosecutor. So anything Sadowski says in front of these students can be used against her. According to the script, Annalise has been in the game for ages, so it's very unlikely she wouldn't know such a basic law concept. Their whole legal defense would be corrupted, and Annalise's attorney license could be taken away after such a rookie mistake. Yikes. Students working on ongoing cases. Annalise brings recent or ongoing cases to the classroom to give her students a chance to resolve them before the actual verdict. Is that what's really happening in college? Eh, wrong. Here's the deal. In law school, you study cases from 300 years ago. The most recent one can maybe be 30 years old, but not one that has just been opened. Basically, ancient cases like these are needed to lay the foundation for students. They have to do so to learn the precedent, understand the legal decision-making, and obviously the verdict. In the first episodes, the Keating Five just Google a bunch of information, compile it with a couple of articles from the textbook without knowing any trial tactics, and voila, the case is closed. You wish. Keep watching to see why Annalise wouldn't win a single case in real life. The court scenes are a joke. Let's get back to the pilot. Annalise takes the case of a young woman accused of the attempted murder of her lover and boss with aspirin. The Keating Five are the ones who find enough evidence to get the client off all charges. We see Connor Walsh, one of the five bright students in Annalise's dream team, seduce a computer hacker to get a valuable piece of evidence. Walsh brings it to the court minutes before the hearing where Annalise is about to cross-examine the witness. She hands it to the witness and says, read it. The whole time, the judge is absolutely cool with it, and we all know Annalise wins the case by the end of the episode. Now let's face the harsh reality. Attorneys have days before the hearing to prepare their defense based on the evidence already found. 
In fact, all the evidence is handed to the judge and prosecutor beforehand as well. You can't just pull out a brand new piece of evidence two minutes before the start of the hearing and hand it to the court. If Annalise Keating did that in real life, there's a chance the evidence would be wholly dismissed. Yet, that's not even the biggest flop of the writers. There's no way an attorney can just ask the witness to read the evidence from the piece of paper. You have to basically ease into it and demonstrate how your evidence directly corresponds with your line of argument against your witness. And should I even talk about the legal extraction of evidence by asking a person who works at the witness's company to hack into his boss's account? Geez, the Lawyers Association is shook right now. Speaking of illegal evidence, Yet again, in the second episode, Asher, Frank, and Michaela are assigned to find evidence for the ongoing case. Surrounded by his partners in crime, Asher is digging in trash to find a relevant lead on a man right in front of his house. What a coincidence, there's a receipt from a strip club that can be conveniently used in court to prove the alibi. Let's start with the fact that this is an improperly obtained piece of evidence. It seems like the trash bin is still on the man's property, which means the trio are not only trespassing on his property, but they're stealing too. Yep, the trash is still seen as property. Annalise Keating puts her own client in jail. In episode two of the first season, Max St. Vincent is tried for the murder of his wife. The murder scene was messy with blood streaks all over the walls and the ceiling. Atrocious. It looked like it was committed by a first timer, which wasn't the case for Max. The client confessed that he had killed his previous partner years ago in Switzerland. The charges were dropped based on insufficient evidence and the killer got away with murder. That was the hook Annalise found strong enough to base her defense on. Max is a hunter and an ex-murderer. He knows how to kill. He would not leave a bloody mess, hence he's not the killer. Time to learn a new term. Keating used the double jeopardy defense, which means you cannot be tried for the same crime twice. Even if Max confessed to murder, he did so after the trial and cannot be prosecuted for it again, despite sufficient evidence against him. Smart choice, you think? Well, do you remember I said the murder happened in Switzerland? If you look it up, double jeopardy does not work when there is a clash of jurisdictions. Hear me out. If Max killed in Switzerland and was convicted in Switzerland, he can still be charged for the same crime in the US because they are different jurisdictions. So it means that Annalise just provided evidence to try her client for another murder. Moving on to the impossible gunners. The Keating Five definitely set the bar way too high for future law students. In the first minutes of the plot, we see a classroom of freshmen chit-chatting before their first lecture of the year. One of the lead characters, Asher Millstone, is gloating to his classmates about his summer internship for the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Hmm, something doesn't add up. Asher came from a wealthy background. Some even referred to him as an entitled douche. But none of those things can guarantee you an internship without legal experience. Let me remind you, this is his first year of studying law, which does not qualify him enough to intern at a law firm, let alone for the chief justice. Even if you are rich and your dad is a federal judge, there's no chance you'd be accepted as an intern into the highest law enforcement institution. Another example is know-it-all overachiever Michaela Pratt, who was getting multiple interviews from different law firms to work for them. Again, how is that possible when she's just an unqualified first-year student? Seems like the showrunners didn't do their research well. And to finish it off with a fun fact, the teaching is actually way off. You might be truly impressed by the studying that goes on in the show and the practice that goes hand in hand with it. In the series, Annalise doesn't mess around and puts her students into legal practice within the first few days of law school. She gives none of the theory, just straight away plunges the Keating Five into solving crimes, or rather, how to keep your clients out of jail. Most of the time, or should I say always, Keating is a questionable professor. Throughout the series, we see that she doesn't share the outcome of the case. She brushes it off as the responsibility of the students to solve the crime. Yet, that's really not how it goes for undergrads. Let me paint a picture for you. First of all, the classes are named for what they are. Corporate law, criminal law, never anything creative or anywhere close to how to get away with murder. Which is not that big of a deal. Maybe some professors want to spice it up a bit. So, inaccurate, but understandable. Second, in real life law school, you never start with applying knowledge without learning the basics first. That's the whole point of the first year. You get zero practice or any chance to apply it right away on any case. And that's fair enough. You know nothing about the legal system yet. 
So why would you get to work on the cases and build your defense when you just covered the first chapter of your textbook? It's like teaching physics to first graders! And just to add another layer of fiction versus reality, you do get to learn the case from start to end, and most of the time your professor does not really leave on a cliffhanger. Ugh, if you analyze each episode like this, you may find that Annalise's reputation would not survive the tough reality. Yet, the series is way too entertaining and thrilling to pay attention to those details. Share in the comments below which facts shocked you the most. And as always, stay awesome!